Hello, so this is a video where I wanted to talk about why military camouflage is superior to sort of hunting camouflage, or I guess you could call civilian hunting camouflage. Um, so this would cover things like real tree and mossy oaks and probably lots of hunting camouflages. Now this, some of the stuff I say in this video might not necessarily apply to all hunting camouflages, but there should be enough stuff in here that would apply to the majority of them. Because I've had lots of comments where people are saying, why do you want a military camo where you can buy like a mossy oak or a real tree or whatever else, and it looks far, far better. So what I thought I'd do is I'd argue the main points on why actually hunting camouflages are generally very inferior to military camouflages. So I'll start off with the obvious one, research and development. Military camouflages have a very practical use which they need to do, which is be able to stop humans from noticing the people wearing the camouflage. Now, military camouflages obviously have a massive amount, for the most part, of research and development put into them. So time and money, where people who know their, you know, know their shit basically, look at the camos and say, this will work, well let's do actual field testing and everything like that. Most hunting camos are where somebody thinks they look cool and want to sell them off. Now, this is part of the problem for lots of hunting camouflages, again, not all of them, but lots of hunting camouflages are actually designed to look cool and entice you to buy them when they're hanging up in a shop, not to actually serve a practical real use. Um, so that's, I think, one of the major points. Now, to go off of that, lots of hunting camouflages have what I'd call bull shots associated with them. Uh, the word bull shot is a bit like screenshot and bullshit uh, rolled into one. It normally applies to like the footage you see at E3 that's never like a finished game. Um, but the reason I say bull shots is lots of hunting camos basically have a picture of somebody stood in the perfect environment for that camouflage to work in, photographed, and don't get me wrong, some military companies when they advertise their camouflage do the exact same thing, but they have the guy in the perfect position for the camo, stood completely still because it's a photograph, and then they probably go on Photoshop and edit the colours and everything to make it look even more like it. Believe me, when I go out and do the camo test, lots of the camos work really well. If I wanted to make them look bullshotty, I could then go into Photoshop and I could change the, you know, vibrances of the colours, the hues and saturations, the contrast and the brightness and everything else, and I could do all that to make the camo look even better. And I think that's what a lot of these companies do. So when you see a picture of somebody wearing, like, their mossy oak or real tree, stood next to an actual tree, um, they're in the perfect environment and the picture's probably been Photoshopped to make them look even better at being hidden. Now... The thing with military disruptive camouflages is, um, like this British Army one, uh, the old famous Soldier 95, and I know this looks a little bit different because it's printed on a raincoat and not actually printed on a uniform, is that they're designed so even when you're moving around, if you imagine I'm in a tree line moving around and I'm in front of a radiator in a house, but um, what you'd get is, is if you're moving slowly, it's still hard to, for the eye to pick out the movement. The reason being is, the whole point of this is it breaks your form up and it breaks your shape up. All of these things to the eye at a distance look like different objects, different bits of grass, different bits of, you know, like bush, different bits of tree, different bits of branch, different bits of mud, all that sort of thing. So the whole point is that they, you know, make you look like various different other objects. And if you're moving slowly, it might just look like the breeze is blowing it. Flectarn's one of my favourite examples of this because if you look at Flectarn, it actually kind of looks like you're looking through one patch of leaves where there's a hole. Um, and you're seeing like leaves of a different shade further in the distance. That's why Flecton just works so well in my opinion. Uh, but DPM is also exceptionally good. So what this is very good at, as I said, is it if you're moving slowly, it can hide your movement. And when you're stood still at a distance, assuming you're not outlining yourself, which applies to every camo, you know, you're going to be well hidden. The problem with lots of hunting camouflages is as well that they don't really do that. They work very well at a certain distance, like I say, especially if you're against the right sort of tree or whatever else, but when the distance is different, they either look a bit too light or too dark, and you start to look like a human silhouette. When the brain can work out that it's looking at a human silhouette, it very quickly knows that there's a person there. Okay, so what other point should I cover as well? So another one is infra infrared reflectiveness, and this is one that lots of people don't consider, but it's really important if you want a camouflage not to be seen. So, basically, if you look back at World War II, where infrared technology didn't really exist or was in its inf you know, infancy, um, but saying that, there wasn't actually that many camo patterns either during the time of World War II, infrared reflectiveness didn't really matter. However, as time went on, and obviously night vision devices started being used, either the very primitive, like I've got infrared one, where you have an infrared lamp, it throws out infrared, then you have a device that can see infrared, uh, infrared is obviously invisible to the human eye, um, it means that basically it's like you're using a flashlight that only your scope or your you know monocular or binoculars can see, and the whole point is that um, 
basically if it hits the camouflage what you want the camouflage to do is have the right kind of dyes in it so it reflects uh, like how the camo pattern looks to the human eye you want different colors to have different amounts of these dyes in so when the infrared light is reflected back and your device picks it up you want it to look like the same camo pattern lots of early camouflages had this problem where they'd all be one solid color so if you looked with your naked eye and it say it's dim out um, you could look at the tree line it all looks fine you put your night vision up and all of a sudden there's a glowing outline or a, you know an outline of a person in one color simply because of how the uh, infrared reflectiveness worked on the clothing now military camouflages have come a very long way and I think if you test almost any modern military camouflage under infrared they work to an okay degree to a very good degree I've not seen many items except for like now and again little bits of equipment where they obviously didn't bother putting the infrared reflectiveness stuff on properly um, you know they generally all are kind of like the grayscale version of the camo which is what you want now hunting camouflages like this um, and I've done this in the other videos if you want to go back and look at them um, when you shine an infrared light at these they glow basically it's like if you've got um, a UV light on something that's a fluorescent color they literally glow like that they almost glow white hot and that would make you stand out some people said well that's not important well it is if you're trying to stay hidden and somebody is scanning the horizon with um, night vision and suddenly you're a glowing silhouette your camo is not doing a very good job um, now somebody did point out to me that a good reason for that is apparently it's like a search and rescue thing um, so if you have a hunting camo like this what you basically want is that if you get lost in the woods and they send a helicopter with an infrared camera to look for you uh, you want to be able to see, be seen very easily so they can rescue you. Same reason you know, you'd know, wear a fluorescent jacket if you're hunting or whatever else so somebody doesn't shoot you by accident. You want something where it's actually obvious if you're in this stuff. Militaries obviously don't want that because the whole point of a military camouflage is to keep you hidden from other people and the equipment they'd be using. So, um, you know, there's also that. Now, some modern camouflage clothing is also bringing in anti-thermal properties, you know, that's meant to block your heat signature from the outside. I don't think anything's completely fixed this yet, but they're getting better. So you can see things where, you know, somebody's using a FLIR or a FLIR camera, forward-looking infrared, um, that shows the thermal signatures. When they've got the modern camos on that have some reflective ability of that or masking ability of that, they don't glow so obviously on the FLIR. It's not good enough yet that it would hide you completely, but you know, it's a step up. Hunting cameras obviously aren't going to do that because they're not designed for that at all. So I think that covers most of the major points. But you know, what I really want to get at is there's a reason militaries use military camouflages that they've spent a massive amount of time developing and using. Hunting camos, while they look cool, are basically designed to sell a product to you. Now the interesting thing of hunting camos as well is lots of animals see in black and white or grey scale or not in the same colour spectrum we see in, so a lot of these camos are actually useless full stop. As I was saying, lots of people can go deer hunting with fluorescent jackets on because the deer can't make out a difference between the jacket and you know other colours. Your smell and how much you move is far more important than um, the camouflage you're wearing. But of course people who sell hunting camos you know, want to uh, stress why their hunting camo is so great. As I said, some hunting camos are better than others. I have seen some hunting camos which are far more like disruptive military camos you know, that have squiggle lines all across them and everything else and different shades of colour. But remember, military camos are designed to work in a wide variety of theatres. For the most part, like woodland camos are going to pretty much work in any woodland um, where they're designed for uh, different tree types, um, you know, an open field if you lay down in bushes and stuff like that. Because generally most Western countries had, you know, woodland camo and desert camo. And the idea was that in the desert you use the desert camo and woodland you use woodland. Now we've got multi-cam and MTP and all these sort of things where they're trying to make a camo that can do more areas to an okay degree but never excel in one area because it's cheaper and more useful if you're a soldier, I guess. You don't have to worry that you might suddenly step into somewhere where your camo doesn't work. But the issue is with lots of hunting camos is they are designed, you know, to work in a very specific area. So if I hold this one up, and I do like this, this has worked well when I've used it in camo tests and I've been in a tree line. Something that's kind of like a Photoshop version of trees and leaves, uh, or an artist's impression of trees and leaves, actually is quite good look um, for, um, you know, when you're stood in a tree line, if you're wearing or something in that, yeah, it looks kind of like somebody's looking through you at other trees, but let's say you're in a place and all the trees are really green with green leaves and you've got this kind of semi-green, semi-autumn, lots of dead uh, leaves kind of thing, that's going to look out of place, isn't it? Same as if you were to lay down in a field and you look like branches and dead leaves in a field um, where everything else is grass, that would stand out, whereas this, which is just shades of green and browns for the most part, um, would look much better. So. 
I think that covers most of the points. I've probably forgotten some, but as I said, there are lots of reasons why I bring this up because it is not as simple as uh, hunting camos are really cool. Real tree would definitely be all the military camos if the soldiers were to use them. Other than things like UCP, which were big failure camos for the most part, um, most military camos are generally good to very good. Um, whereas lots of hunting camos are very good in specific areas, but remember they're mostly to sell you the camo to look cool um, when it's on a clothing rack in a hunting store, you know, or a sports store, not to actually um, be all that practical as a camo.